Canadian healthcare system. Admired from coast to coast. Although a number of stories that we've recently had in the press which make people remember just how important it is that we have a strong and robust health care system. There was a report out from the Fraser Institute we've been discussing on this program how wait times for specialist appointments and surgeries have vastly increased unnecessarily. I've been covering a lot of story out of British Columbia where people are going to court to fight the fact that they cannot get private surgery to get them off a waiting list, even when a surgeon has exceeded their government-mandated quotas and is just sitting around twiddling their thumbs. They say that violates, violates their charter rights. Many, many issues out there, and of course, because health care is often the number one expense of the provinces and a major part of federal transfers. We rely on the system. That's why health care innovation is important to us in terms of getting a, a robust system that's doing groundbreaking work and good dollars for money. One of the companies that's at the front lines of looking at technology innovations in healthcare is InnoCare Canada. And we're joined right now by Heather Shantora, CEO of InnoCare Canada. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Anthony. Like I said, you're just at there, the, the, the front lines of an issue that so many Canadians rely upon and care about, aren't you? Absolutely. I think technology is has been pervasive in all areas of our lives, but not so much healthcare. I mean, the co-authors of the Fraser Institute report actually said that the policy need, makers need to reform outdated policies that are contributing to the wait time. And it's true, those policies largely are barriers to technology being put in the healthcare systems that more Canadians can get treated faster. It's so unfortunate. I, uh, St. Michael's College uh, Hospital in downtown Toronto is currently undergoing a physical renovation, which is which is nice. My my youngest child is just over one and was born premature last year, so he had to stay there for a while. And I was walking around the facility, and obviously this isn't you know the, exactly the same issues you're talking about. But I, I'm walking around, I'm looking around, and go, man, this looks like some like Soviet era bunker. You know, the build a physical building just seems so out of date. It's not what we think of with like an innovative 21st century system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when even if we're talking about eHealth Ontario or anything else, they say the barriers are, you know, lack of coordination, lack of communication between dis- different systems. Like, there's a ton of reasons out there. But if we draw a parallel and look to a different sector that's equally as complicated and, and equally as dear to Canadians, which would be their own personal finances, um, you know, competing corporations that are our major four banks, they they have a clearinghouse for real time. You can go to one ATM and do a transaction, get your money, which is from a different bank, as well as your statement to show what's in there. Surely if they can do it and they're not worried, you know, they've overcome privacy laws and everything else, we can do the same for our healthcare system. Uh, Heather's referring to eHealth Ontario, which is a program that wanted to digitize health records. Absolutely everything is digitized. Like Heather's saying, you can make financial trades easily. You can take a photo of your check and get it deposited. But no, your healthcare files, many of them are still just in paper or the digital ones are not in some broad digital clearinghouse. It's just different files at different hospitals. And it's so tough. And we had a scandal a number of years ago in Ontario where just money was being frittered away and they still haven't digitized it. Heather Shantora, CEO of InnoCare Canada, tell us what sort of things is your are your company looking at right now in terms of healthcare innovation? Right. Electronic charting is the biggest thing that we're focused on right now. What we see are a ton of clinicians and physicians who are, you know, have wait times. They're just trying to get through their day and they have actual administrative burnout because of the increased regulation um, as well as increased privacy law, which, of course, are important to protect Canadians. It's increased their indirect patient care significantly, meaning in their work week, they're spending more hours not treating patients. They're actually doing paperwork. So what we're trying to do is streamline that for them by making them more efficient, even saving them as little as an hour a day. They can see three more patients a day. Imagine what that would do to wait times. That would bring it down significantly. And that's where I think we need to focus on um, bringing innovation in and, you know, decreasing administrative burden at all costs so that you know, the clinicians can get to doing what they really want to do, which is direct patient care. Have you seen this HBO comedy called Getting On? I have not. It's a, it's a show about nurses working in a long-term care facility. It stars Laurie Metcalf from Roseanne and Alex Borstein, who's, who's, who voices the mom on Family Guy. And it is just hilarious. I just discovered it. I found it on Crave. It's three seasons. And it's just a hilarious show. And a lot of it is about nurses 
sort of navigating exactly what you're talking about, this bureaucratic bungling and having all these weird meetings about processes. And, and it's a great comedy. But at the end of the day, you know, your comment made me think about that, because if we don't have... I don't even want to say innovative. If we just don't have the same digital processes that the private sector has, we're paying these people to spend all this time with paperwork and so forth where they're not helping grandma get over her, you know, treatments and helping make her patients and family members feel more comfortable. Absolutely. And you have to wonder whether we're actually putting the pressure on the right area to get this done. Like eHealth Ontario, for example, um, is, you know, an arm of the government. In any other institution, or excuse me, any other sector, we would actually look to the private sector to do that. So why is it we're not going to our electronic health record um, providers, which are large technology companies, like TELUS, for example, is, is, is a big player in that market. Why are we not going to them and demanding more? The physicians, the hospitals, they pay you know, tens of thousands of dollars a year individually for their electronic health records at their own practices. We should be demanding innovation from the technology giants. We probably see a lot more done faster than relying on the government to take the lead on this. Well, the e-health scandal is now well over five years old, and I think maybe people think, oh, it's all over because they're not in the headlines anymore. No, it's still this operation with hundreds of Sunshine List employees making six figures working on this process. And and to your point, I mean, I, I don't even get what's going on and why it's taken so long. Well, and it does sound like it's going to be this amazing electronic medical record system. It's not. In fact, what they're working on is literally a repository for the data. And again, if you look at any other sector, we've made very, very complicated things and systems speak to each other just by having a combined database. And essentially, that's what they're trying to do. And what they'll say is there's too many different electronic medical records companies um, you know, with, with fields that don't match and therefore the data doesn't match. But again, it's really just the will of the technology giants to get this done. We have solved far bigger problems in Canada using technology. This really just is around discipline and vision and having a strategy to get it done. Great point. I was saying I had that, I don't want to say bad experience at that St. Michael's College because it was, it was a great experience. Great hospital nurses were fantastic, but it just seemed so out of date. But when, when my child was first born, the first few days he was in uh, very intensive care at Sunnybrook Hospital, they seem to be, uh, at least in many respects, ahead of the curve in terms of new technology and new devices. And it was, you know, hats off to them and the great work they did. C can you tell me what does a, a thriving and effective healthcare system in Canada look like? What will the future, what should the future bring us? I definitely think integrated medical records are part of that. I think making it a patient-centric system so that if the patient, for example, sprains their ankle, um, they have access to technology, let's say a patient app, that would then direct them to primary health care. But that would not be the family doctor. It really should be the physiotherapist or a chiropractor. These are all government-regulated health professionals that are handled to deal with this. And yet, in a physician's waiting room, one-third of them are musculoskeletal injuries that could be handled elsewhere by other clinics. I think that from there, we would have lab results that integrated with the physician. All of that could be made available to the specialist if a specialist referral was required. But ultimately, the patient has a better experience. We have less risk to the patient because all those comorbidities are identified in the system. So we don't actually accidentally have two different healthcare practitioners making contraindicative devices or excuse me, advice. Um, I also think that being able to access wait times on your phone to actually show, okay, if I went to this walk-in clinic versus that, what are my wait times? What will they look like? Because we know that a success to recovery in a patient really comes down to the speed with which we're able to treat them. And that's why the speed that the clinicians and physicians can work at is so critically important. The more patients they can see, the shorter the wait times, the better the clinical outcomes for the patients. Heather, before I let you go, are you optimistic that the work that other companies and InnoCare Canada is, is wanting to do and lobbying to have happen in our healthcare system will soon come to fruition? Yeah, I think the difference is we've kind of stopped lobbying and we're now just getting on with the innovation. So the technology we're putting out there is pretty fascinating and we're selling actually direct to the clinicians. And so I think what we're doing is rather than waiting for someone else to take a leadership role, we're just doing it ourselves. And if, if our software is, you know, sexy enough, intuitive enough, then physicians are going to want to change. And when they begin to see an improvement in their practice, we're going to see an improvement in outcomes for Ontarians and Canadians. And, and then the government, you know, they will see and the outcomes will be better. So I, I think we're just, we're getting on with it rather than waiting to try and get a coordinated effort. Heather Shantour, CEO of InnoCare Canada, thanks very much for stopping by. Thank you, Anthony.